Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites, where you can borrow a book at our Read It and Return Lending Library and return it on your next stay. Country Inns and Suites by Carlson, committed to literacy. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Butterfly in the sky I can go twice as high Take a look It's in a book Reading Rainbow I can go anywhere Friends to know and ways to grow Reading Rainbow I can be anything Take a look It's in Hi there. Or as we say in Italian, buongiorno, 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 come stai? Well, I hope you're hungry because today's show is all about one of the world's most popular foods, pizza. You know, Americans eat over 8 billion slices of it a year. Excuse me. Hello? Hi, Stephanie. No, 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 no I, was, I was just getting ready for tonight. Uh-huh. Your, your cousin's in town. Well, bring him along. No, 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 I, I'm sure. Uh-huh. It's okay, yeah. All righty. I'll see you later then. Bye-bye. That was my friend Stephanie. She's coming over for pizza tonight, and I thought rather than ordering out from a pizzeria, I'd surprise her and make it myself. So. As any great pizza lover will tell you, you can't make a great pizza without a great crust. And the secret to that crust is in here. Yeast. It's a tiny little fungus, and you wouldn't know by looking at it, but these little critters are alive. To get the yeast started, you pour it into a small bowl of warm water and stir it all up. Now, add this yeast mixture to some more water. Pour it all into the flour and mix it with a spoon until it becomes dough. Now comes the fun part. You just press out the dough and fold again and again. This is called kneading. Here it is. Now, I know it doesn't look big enough for a party-sized pizza, but don't worry. The yeast inside is still working. We just need to cover it for a while to keep it warm. There. In a little while, you won't believe what happens. In the meantime, here's a story about a whole family that's in the pizza-making business. They say, if you want the best pizza in town, just go to Little Nino's Pizzeria. Little Nino's Pizzeria by Karen Barber. Read by Josh Savian. My dad, Nino, makes the best pizza in the world. I'm his best helper. I help knead the pizza dough. I help stir the pizza sauce. And I 
help grate the cheese. Mmm, Nino makes the best pizza. I love coming to eat here. Oh, this tastes delicious. Mmm, -hmm. I love pepperoni. Make my mushroom. When the customers are finished, I know how to pick up their plates and carry out the dirty dishes. I help give the extra pizzas to hungry people in the alley who have no homes. What a treat. Thanks. And I help my dad serve our pizza pies. People come from all over town to eat at Little Nino's. They wait in long lines because our restaurant is so small. One night, a man came to see my dad after the last pizza. What did he want? That night, my dad told my mom we would be making lots more money now. The next day, my dad locked up little Ninos. Soon, he opened a big, fancy, expensive restaurant. He called it Big Nino. How tasty. Everything is simply divine. I tried to help in the dining room, but the waiters tripped over me and spilled a lot of food. Mamma mia! Watch out for the flying of pizza! I tried to help in the kitchen, but Francois, the chef, pushed me away. I asked my dad how he could help, but he was too busy to even notice me. No matter how I tried to be helpful, I was always in the way. So, I went home. I miss little Ninos. But then, one night, my dad came home from Big Nino extra tired. He said, I miss cutting tomatoes and chopping onions and kneading dough. I'm tired of so much paperwork and money talk. He shouted, I want, I want to make a pizza. And then he looked at me, Ton, my best helper. So the next day, we went back to Little Nino's. Soon, we reopened it. And the man from Big Nino got a new person to be in charge there. My dad, Nino, still makes the best pizza in the world. But he changed the name of our restaurant. Little Tony's. Yeah. Remember that little ball of dough? Well, look at it now. The yeast blew it up like a balloon. Now watch this. I punch out a little of the extra air, and then Flatten it out just a little around the edge. Now, there are several ways to flatten out dough. You can use a rolling pin, or you can try this. Are you ready? Okay. Now, I've got to make the biggest pizza possible because when it comes to pizza, you've got to make sure you have enough for everyone. I can eat a lot of pizza. I love pizza. How about you? But like normally, naturally, I would only want to eat about three slices. One. Six slices. Two. About ten slices. I could eat about five boxes. I could consume a couple of hundred pieces. Four. A hundred pieces. About 800 slices. 600 elephants full. 45,925,777 pizzas, <laughs> pies. Well, the crust is finished. Is finished. Hello? Hi, Steph. What's up? 
Your cousin wants to bring his high school basketball team. All five of them. Well, yeah, sure, bring them. Okay, see you at 6.30. Bye-bye. Well, I better make this bigger. But that's no problem. Just make it bigger. That's all. Just make it bigger. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Bigger. Bigger. Ooh. Ooh. Ouch. Well, that'll never do. Um, I better start all over. That's it. I'll start all over. In fact, I'll double the recipe. You know, you gotta be very patient when making a perfect pizza. So, while I turn this into a jumbo pie, Here's another example of how practice makes perfect. Now, you and I won't ever practice making fireworks, but this family certainly has. Learning how to make fireworks doesn't happen overnight. It takes years and years of experience. I'm Phil Grucci. I'm a fifth generation member of the Grucci family. And when we do large fireworks programs, we don't always do it on land. We bring them out on barges and float the barges out to the middle of a river, and that becomes our stage. What we're doing now, starting to set up the barges for a mammoth fireworks program that we'll be doing this weekend. The first job that we have to do when we get onto the barge is put our pipes in. Once we load our pipes into the boxes, we have to run a wire to each one of the pipes. That wire is gonna be connected to a firework, and this is what a firework looks like. We call them shells. The shell has to go all the way down to the bottom of the pipe in order for it to function effectively. When we're handling the firework pieces, we handle them very, very gently, like it's an egg. We don't want to break the firework, or we handle it very carefully. It's never dropped, and it's never mishandled. If you've ever wondered what a firework is made out of, let me show you. This is one of the many fireworks that we're using on the barges. This firework is made with a cardboard, hand-rolled casing. And the casing is filled with small balls that we call stars. The stars are the magic of the fireworks. The stars are chemically made to produce different colors and different patterns. They're very light, they're very soft, and they're round, as you can see. One of the things that I love so much about this job is being able to work so closely with my family, being that we are a family company, a family business. Donna, my aunt, is the vice president of Fireworks by Gucci. Donna selects a lot of the music that you might hear when you see our fireworks displays. And then there's Cricket, my cousin. He's one of our chief technicians that works and keeps everything flowing and working out here on site. My grandmother is the glue of our family. She is the, the backbone keeping everybody together, as well as teaching us the importance of safety with fireworks. It's good. Mother Nature's on our side. Thank God for that. Good thing you ordered it until it. I told you we were going to have nice weather. The person that's most responsible for teaching me what I know about fireworks is my grandfather. The older generation teaching the younger generation was important in the success of my family. When we were children growing up, the one thing that I learned from my dad was to respect fireworks. And my brothers and myself now are teaching our children the same thing, to respect them. Fireworks are dangerous. This is what we call a world-class show. It's a very, very large-scale production. It didn't always used to be that way. We used to use a lot of pinwheels and American flags. But today's shows have so many more people that come that we have to put a lot way up in the air. There we are. We're going to have lunch now, guys. What makes this all so much fun is the teamwork that goes into it. It's just such a rewarding feeling to see all of us work together for so many hours and to be able to produce such beauty. It's a very warm, rewarding feeling. Oh, gosh, but what happens if it rains on the night of the big show? Yeah, the marine is over there. Everything is uh, tight and dry on the barges, and the program will happen. In spite of everything, the show is going to go on regardless of the weather. Oh, here they come, look. Here comes the, here comes the tug now. Yeah, they may be on this right now. I hope this is my grandson coming in now. 
My job's to produce the fireworks show for the river. There's a tremendous amount of pressure on myself and the rest of the family to make all of these fireworks go off at the same time. Right now, I'm very nervous with the weather. These are the breaks of our profession. We can't control Mother Nature. It's going to happen. Mother Nature's working a little bit with us. Hey, stand by. Two, do you copy? Three, two, one. Second to being married, that was the best experience of my life. <laughs> okay, this ought to be big enough to feed a high school basketball team. Now, here comes my favorite part. Adding the sauce and the toppings. Hello? Yes, Stephanie, the coach can come too. Yes, okay. I'll see you later. <laughs> uh, you know, I should have asked Stephanie what the coach likes on his pizza. Everybody has their favorite toppings. What's yours? My favorite toppings are green peppers and onions with extra cheese. Mushrooms. Olives. Sausage. Garlic. Hot sauce. Mm. Pepperoni, sausage, and pickles. No, that wasn't it. Gumballs, onions, oysters, candy bars, another pizza. I guess the only way to top a pizza for everyone is with a little bit of everything. So finally, I get to add the sauce. Here we go. A little bit of sauce. I love this part. This is great. Put a little sauce. Slather it around there. And now for my pizza resistance. Perfecto. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Very good, very good. Molto bene, molto bene. Right. You know, the best thing about making pizza is that you can make it any way you want. And of course, eating it can be just as creative. And everyone has their own favorite style. What's your favorite style? <laughs> Personality that every pizza lover has. So when you share it with your friends and their manners seem to slip away, well, it's okay. Cause when you're eating the pizza, everybody eats a different way. When you pass around the slices and it gets a little messy and you're not sure what to do, don't worry. Open up wide. And let your style shine through. Let your pizza style shine on through. OK. You know, I better get this thing cooked before everybody arrives. Here we go.
Everything will fit. I'm coming. Hello. Stephanie. How many more? Oh, wait a minute. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. Well, looks like it's gonna take me a little while to figure this out. But there's no need for you to go hungry, so... Here are some books that will really satisfy your appetite. But you don't have to take my word for it. Hi, my name's Brooke Alexander. I have a poetry book of the most unusual kind. It's all about food. It's called Eats Poems by Arnold Adolph. The whole world is made up of a lot of different kinds of foods. Arnold Adolph thinks food is great. His poems have a catchy rhythm. In the poem about pizza, the dough seems to be the most important, but not to me. I love the cheese. Chocolate, chocolate, I love chocolate. If you're crazy about food and have a wacky imagination, read Eats Poems. Hi, I'm Cameron. Have you ever wondered how food travels through your body? Well, in this book called What Happens to a Hamburger, you can find the answers to some of your questions. Digestion begins in your mouth. It starts when you chew your food and continues after you swallow it. It goes down a tube called your esophagus, then it arrives in your stomach. When the food turns into a liquid, it's really yucky. I think you'll really be amazed when you discover how hard your stomach works. So the next time you eat something, think about what happens to a hamburger. Hey, you kernel fans out there. Popcorn kernels, that is. If you love popcorn the way I do, you'll eat this book right up. It's called The Popcorn Book. This book tells you lots of great facts and funny stories about popcorn. Did you know that popcorn was discovered by Native Americans? The Indians ate popcorn. They also wore it as jewelry. There's a funny folk tale in the book. One summer in the Midwest, it was so hot and dry that the corn in the fields began to pop. It looked like a blizzard outside. I'm Kamali Minter, and popcorn isn't just good for the movies, it's also good for reading. So why don't you pop over to your library and pick up the popcorn book? Well, I finally solved my problem. And I'm very excited because this is going to be a great pizza party. All thanks to Sal's Emergency Pizza Delivery Service. <laughs> Well, you know, I never got an opportunity to finish my pizza, but I'm going to try again soon. And the next time you're in the mood for some mouth-watering pizza, why don't you try making your own? Put three cups of flour into a large mixing bowl. Add a pinch of salt. Dissolve one package of yeast into two cups of warm water and add this mixture to the flour. Mix it with a spoon until it becomes dough. Knead the dough for two to three minutes. Cover and set it aside to rise in a warm spot. After an hour, punch down the dough and flatten it out. Start with the edges, and then use your hands like the pros. Add sauce, shredded cheese, and then your favorite toppings. And finally, Bake your pizza in a preheated oven at 500 degrees for 10 minutes. And don't forget the most important thing of all. Make sure your pizza will fit in your oven. Well, maybe I'll just take a peek. Ah, 
deliziosa. Bene, 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 bene. I'll see you next time. Today's Reading Rainbow books are Little Nino's Pizzeria by Karen Barber, published by Harcourt Brace Jovanovich, Incorporated. Eats Poems by Arnold Adolph, illustrated by Susan Russo, published by Lothrop Lee and Shepherd Books. What Happens to a Hamburger by Paul Showers, illustrated by Anne Rockwell, published by Thomas Y. Crowell. The Popcorn Book by Tommy DePaula published by Holiday House. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton. In uncertain times, there's no more effective way to make your kids feel good and safe than to spend time with them. We at Reading Rainbow suggest sharing a book with your family. Read for fun, read for family, read for our future. Funding for Reading Rainbow is provided by Country Inns and Suites by Carlson offering a family-friendly atmosphere and the Read It and Return Lending Library, where you can borrow a book and return it on your next day. And by a ready-to-learn television cooperative agreement from the U.S. Department of Education through the Public Broadcasting Service. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Doink! <laughs>